Hi everybody, it's Dr. Kim DeRamo coming to you live for our Mind Body TV this week. Welcome to the Facebook Live, or if you're watching this on the video, welcome to those listening to the recording. Today I'm going to share about how to stop taking on other people's negative energy. This is something that I encounter a lot from people that I work with, um, either privately over Skype or people that I assist in my group programs, that so much of the heaviness they're experiencing in their body or the negativity or the overwhelm is coming from their experience with other people. And it's like, oh, I've got to get away from these negative people or I'm empathic, you know, so to stop experiencing life as an empath where it's like this heaviness, I'm like sucking up everybody's energy. I'm so sensitive and I'm just too sensitive and I've got to put barriers up and protect myself. So how to stop um, experiencing life as an empath and begin to experience life in freedom and fluidity. So it's a major difference. I know um, for me, it was that way for a very long time where there was so much sensitivity and it really is just awareness, but we experience it as like, oh, I'm just too sensitive for a lot of, in a lot of ways. And it's, it, 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 it doesn't need to be that way. So that was my experience for a long time, especially working with people in the emergency room because I was practicing as an ER doctor for years and years or in my osteopathic practice more in like a healing capacity where there'd be such a release of emotional energies or all kinds of things and it'd be like oh I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed at the end of the day I'm taking on people's energies and I remember always kind of looking for how do I protect myself from my patient's energies but that's not actually what is uh, we don't need to ask that question because you don't need to actually protect yourself from this question quote unquote negativity. It is so much easier than that and so much more freeing and fluid when we learn to let the energy flow through us. So the first key to this experience is that we begin to experience what we're experiencing in the body from a space of allowing, from a space of compassion. There isn't actually, I'm picking up someone else's energy and they're this negative thing that I've got to avoid and if I avoid this negative thing, then I'll be okay. That's conditional freedom, it's pseudo freedom. It's not the same as ultimate freedom or pure love or true freedom totally different and you want to begin to experience life in pure freedom. So when I could begin to allow the energy to flow through me because I embodied compassion for my experience um, and willingness to allow that energy to flow, willingness to have that experience, it no longer got stuck. It no longer stuck around or felt heavy or was overwhelming or any of that. So that's kind of the first piece is that when we have the willingness to experience what I'm experiencing, it's my experience. Even though I could label it as their energy or their negativity or their whatever, what I'm experiencing in my body is, in this moment anyway, is my experience. And when I can be willing, completely and fully willing, to have that experience, to breathe through that experience, to allow that experience, to feel that heaviness or that despair or that overwhelm or fill in the blank, I allow that energy to move through. What you resist persists. So that is the biggest key for the first piece is that what am I resisting that's having this person or thing trigger me? And hi to everybody who's coming on. It's great to see you and I welcome your questions now or during the recording. I'll make sure to come back and, uh, and go through these. I wanna show you a little diagram. So you've got your own, um, your own person here and then you encounter this other person. <laughs> and whenever we encounter another person, we're encountering their energy field. And so we have this like field of energy around our body. They have a field of energy around their body. And then we kind of get in proximity let's say they have a bunch of like you know negative things this person is like I'm really unhappy I'm miserable life stinks and they have all these little dingers in their energy field that they walk around with so put little negative signs right and then they encounter my field and I start feeling that now if I'm free and clear and I've got like I love myself unconditionally I am willing to experience everything in my experience fluidly and completely these little dingers don't stick in my field. But if I'm resisting, like, oh God, I don't want to take that on, or oh, that's just so bad, or this heaviness, or I have judgment on it, 
then I'm actually carrying these things in my own field. And when this person comes around, it's going to light them up. So what's actually happening is this person is coming in as a gift to help me experience my unhealed emotions, my un incomplete, I call it incomplete energies. This person's coming in and helping me experience my incomplete energies, the energies that are ready to move in me that I have not made space for, that I have not allowed, that I'm still judging or resisting or holding on to, and it's a gift. Now, it doesn't feel like a gift. It feels like, ooh, now I'm feeling all these little nuggets that I don't want to feel. And if I just get away from this person and work really, really hard either to change them, make them not be so negative, or get away from them, like I'm going to leave that relationship or leave that job or not talk to that person anymore, now we're in greater resistance. The only thing we're really resisting is ourselves, is our own experience and our own energy. So we, we can allow this, like, okay, yes, despair, come in, have a seat at the table, stay as long as you like. Now I'm no longer in resistance. Now I know that sounds like oosh, scary. I don't want to do that. Wouldn't I be taking on more? It's not actually what's happening. When you're in non-resistance, it is a higher frequency. It allows these energies to clear. And what you'll see is that it'll invite people who are ready to clear that within themselves. So if it's your spouse who's this like negative person or your family member, your mother, and it's like, oh, they're just so negative. As you clear what's within you, it invites you into a different experience of them and invites them to step into a different aspect of themselves so that maybe when they show up with other people, they still carry that old song and dance, but when they show up to you, you have a very different experience of them. So this is a lot of what's happening when you encounter someone else and the more you label it as negative or wrong or I've got to get away from this, the more resistance you hold to having the experience you're having. One of the things that has helped me the most with that, with actually allowing myself to release resistance is, um, and I've mentioned this before, but it's called Ho'oponopono. It's an ancient Hawaiian healing art of um, really embracing everything that's coming up for us within our body. A lot of times we're so disconnected from what's in our body that it's like, projected onto everyone else, projected on everyone around us. And it's like, I gotta escape. I've gotta get out of this world. I'm getting it off the planet. I can't stand it. And so we feel like we need to protect ourselves when we're in those circumstances or around those people. And it is not the truth. There is no need for protection when you embody greater compassion. And so the Ho'oponopono is a four part mantra. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I speak it or um, share it to the, the unhealed parts in me, the parts that feel fearful, the parts that feel overwhelmed, the parts that feel anger, frustration, lack, like, oh, I feel like such a victim. That's a big thing that happens if, you know, any of you consider yourself an empath, which for me kind of used to be part of my mix. Um, but it's like a victim energy of like, oh God, I'm getting bombarded. I'm getting bombarded. I have to protect myself. So if you've kind of identified yourself as an empath, this is an invitation to shift that in a very powerful way. As you embody that, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. To the space of what's hurting in you, to what's coming up within you. It's not to the other person. It's to what I notice within myself. I breathe in. I breathe out. I offer compassion to this part of me that I've been avoiding, that I've been resisting, that I've been maybe judging, that I've not been willing to experience fully. And that's all it is. It is so incredibly fast how these energies can lift from our energy field. So like we look at this <laughs> highly schematic drawing, you have these little negative dingers in your energy field, other people are bumping up against them and now you feel them. And it's like, let me just work really hard to avoid this or protect myself from this, but you don't need to do that anymore. When you allow yourself to release these, you can be in resilience. So you can come up against anyone or anything in a space of pure love and compassion. This is um, a really great example of someone like Mother Teresa who does her work in a space of immense, immense despair. The energy field in Calcutta is a very, very low frequency. A lot of powerlessness, hopelessness, lack, despair, fear, 
um, when I worked at Grady Hospital in Atlanta, and there were so many amazing people doing work there, but the frequency was really low. And in fact, all of like the residents, we'd talk and be like, oh, you got to go home and wash off the Grady because you could feel it like a like an energy, energy layer of this heaviness on you. But that's what this was, is this low frequency of powerlessness or um, despair or hopelessness and people coming who were in so much need. And to be in that space and move through fluidly requires immense compassion. That's why someone like Mother Teresa is so powerful to invite healing in these other people that she's working with. She's in a really low frequency field. Most people will visit there and be like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. I've got to get out of here. Um, and it's really, really, it's challenging. It's not that it's not hard, but it is an invitation and it is a gift that when you come up against other people who feel negative or feel like, oh, this person's so heavy, it's my resistance to that experience that creates a problem for me not the other person. And, and I see this a lot too with people who are like, oh, I really love your work and oh, my husband really needs your work. Oh, I really love your work. Oh, my kid really needs your work. And what I found is the power is always within me. As I embody this awareness more and more fully, especially with the, um, the Ho'oponopono, um, I can embody, I love you. All, that, all the pain or the anger or the fear or the powerlessness of, oh, this person's doing this thing to me. I can allow that to resolve and dissolve. So I move from that lower frequency of powerlessness, this is happening to me, I can't change this person, into a higher frequency of empowerment. I am the source of power in my life. I am the source of abundance in my life. I am the source of pure love in my life. And I can experience that with everyone around me. Um, the second piece I wanted to speak about is that... Um, as we move from being an empath, which is like a victim energy, life is happening to me and I'm so sensitive, into neutrality, which is I'm empowered. I am the one in charge of my experience. And as I embrace compassion, I can move through all of it fluidly. So the first piece is really that willingness and you know, kind of releasing resistance and embracing willingness. And the second one is this space of victim empath versus, you know, sensitive versus aware and compassion. Because you are meant to have this awareness, not shut it down and protect yourself. And I don't want to feel anything. Let me just numb myself out. But to be an awakened being who is aware, but doing it with compassion. Otherwise, it's like excruciating to have this awareness you feel the pain of everyone around you. I posted a really great video earlier this week about um, embodying pain in my dance class and being able to move through it fluidly and have this incredible, juicy experience that was a very alive experience with so much compassion from my friend who was having a really big challenge, from my aunt who's been dealing with cancer and having a big challenge with that. She had sent me a message the night before and I could just feel like the intensity in it. It didn't bring me into like buying into the despair, buying into the powerlessness at all. It brought me into a deep appreciation of the human experience and how intense and deep and profound it can be. And then allow that to be my dance and allow that to come through me. And it's, it actually energizes my body. It gives me the energy to be that expression in that moment. And that's really what these energies are meant to do for us. They're not meant like, I gotta get out of this negativity. I gotta be positive. When we have greater willingness through compassion, we can embody all of these energies very, very fluidly. So that's the second part is to move out of the space of um, experiencing life as a, an empath slash victim. I'm oversensitive and step into compassion for everything that's coming through me, every part of me. I had a really great friend call me this morning because there was so much coming up with her um, around not having a relationship. And it's like, geez, I've been on my own for so long and I've been embracing, you know, I love myself and I'm willing to go through this. I'm going to celebrate myself. I've spent the summer and, and, you know, doing rafting trips by myself, you know, enjoying myself, but like, what the heck, why am I still alone? And so I invited her as well to just go deeper into what is this next layer, because this is a layer of you. This isn't something to fix or get rid of. This is a part of you that hasn't been fully met. This is a part of you that hasn't received what it fully needs. 
And that's one reason I love the Ho'oponopono mantra. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And you're really sharing that with the unhealed part of you. You don't necessarily have to know, oh, it was when I was three years old and didn't have this thing go the way I needed it to go, or when I was eight and this thing happened, or trauma, or whatever. You don't need to have like a psychotherapy experience. You can simply witness the energies that, that are coming up. And I guarantee you, life will bring them up for you. And that's what this is about, is like sometimes it brings it up through that other person that you don't like and you don't want that experience, and you're like, I'm gonna resist this. I just wanna make it go away. So the invitation is to do the opposite and to invite it, invite those fears to arise, invite that overwhelm to come up and relax your body, breathe more fully. That's my biggest mantra, relax your body, breathe more fully. Yes, this will be posted for a replay. Um, so again, I'm welcoming questions for here and I'll go back over them and then um, when we have the replay as well, if you're listening to the replay, certainly I welcome your questions. The third part is our conscious choice. Would I be willing to unconditionally embrace what comes up, to choose this expansion? Because usually we're taught like, no, 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 resist it. And if you do these 10 things, you'll never have to feel your pain again. It's a very contrived way of living. It's a very tight way of living. It's a very overwhelming and exhausting way of living where we have to do it. We have to fix it. We have to overcome it and achieve. And if I do these 10 things or, um, I'm going to take this course or learn this thing or get better and more disciplined at that, then we block the pain. We don't have to feel that pain. Eventually this will get old. So you can try all of those tactics as long as you like. I've busted my butt doing that for years. Um, but you will come to the realization of, I have to let go and let something in. And that's where the choosing instead of resisting, to embrace unconditionally. In my group program, um, Embracing Health, it's that's the whole premise, is that we're trying so hard to fix our health, we're trying so hard to fix our body. Um, yes, this works for people who are hurting and there's people around them hurting as well. It's really great questions that are coming up. You can't change the people around you, but as you embrace, and I'll just show this little diagram again, even though I know I didn't do a great job on it, but you know, here's you and your energy field, and here's this grumpy person with lots of little dingers of anger, negativity, and fear, and frustration, and they come into your field, and they will particularly light up any areas that are unhealed in you. So yes, you can distance yourself from the equation, but at the same time, at least, you want to resolve what's happening within you. And so breathing as you witness it, I'm willing to feel this. I choose to invite this. I'm willing to embrace unconditional love for all of this experience instead of pushing it away. You'll allow this part of you to clear. You're not, you're no longer holding that heaviness or holding that negativity, quote unquote, that other people are dinging on. This is your experience. So yes, you can okay, let me distance myself and get away. But the most important part is that you clear this within you because as you do and you release this resistance, it will have this experience be different. Either that person shows up differently or they just go into another stratosphere and you don't even hear about them again. New people come in that are a reflection of the pure love you've embraced, of the unconditional willingness to be present to you. That is the most essential ingredient in living a vibrant, fluid harmonic, healthy life. It is the number one thing. Um, so I was mentioning in the Embracing Health program, that's the whole premise of the program is like, instead of resisting our experience and like fixing it, and here's the nutrition I need to do, and here's all the supplements that I need, and let me do this and let me learn that. Eventually we come to a place where none of that actually works to create more, to allow more freedom and more aliveness and more fluidity in the things that really create health. So they can help, maybe in the short term, uh, but ultimately this there's also the requirement that we begin to embrace ourselves more fully. And so that's that third part is, okay, I invite this, I invite this nitty gritty, yucky, mucky, whatever that's coming up in me today, either from this other person that's around me or from uh, an experience I'm having, or it could be just like, thoughts, you know, I'm, oh, I'm just so worried about my money. Or for me, I would just walk through the grocery store and be like, oh, I'm so bombarded with all of these energy frequencies. I didn't realize that it was because those were incomplete in me. Those were part of my energy system that I hadn't 
learned to navigate through with the fluidity that was required. And the more I've moved into neutrality, and that's really the basis of where I've gone with my work in mind-body medicine, um, non-resistance. Neutrality doesn't mean contentment, where it's like, okay, I guess life's not going to be so great, but at least it's not going to be so bad where you're in that like neutral. That's not this kind of neutrality. It is the space of um, pure love, of embracing all that is. I don't have a judgment about it. It's not wrong for me to experience this moment of anger or this moment of despair. I don't need a reason why. I can just breathe it in and breathe it out. And it's a great question. What does it mean to witness something? Well, <laughs> I have all these messages coming across. What does it mean to witness something is to be present to what's coming up in me. It takes a deeper level of stillness, and actually that's why relaxing the body and slowing the breath invites that. That's when people will start this work, they'll be like, whoa, I feel so much worse. Things come up more intensely when we relax the body and breathe more fully. One of the things that happens is we tighten up, we breathe into the shallow breaths in the chest and use our neck muscles and develop like neck pain or, or migraine headaches or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue or fill in the blank because we're trying so hard to avoid feeling what's in our body, feeling the pain or the despair, despair or the fear. And it is so much easier when you just allow yourself to feel it, witness it so that you experience it like... Holy crap, this is so intense. Wow, there's so much fear. And then you can connect and breathe, okay? I love you, I love you, I love you. Now you're not in reaction, you're in responding. What is the response? Well, who knows? It's more natural and fluid though, if I'm connected with my body. The response may be, for me a lot of times, just touch my body, like, okay baby, I'm right here. It's okay, let my body settle down because I used to live in this real hyper, go, 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 do, do, do. And my life got created from that fear, from that urgency. So yeah, good things came in, but um, <laughs> it was like pretty chaotic and often overwhelming. Um, yes, yeah, a great comment. When you invite in the feeling, it's horrible. Well, it can be very intense. It can be, um, and I'm not talking about inviting the feeling of, let me feel everything around me right now. And this woman is talking about being on a train. It's not that I'm going to, oh, let me pick up on this and, and tune into everything around me. Um, it's more about tuning into what's happening within me. What's going on within me? When you relax your body, you will feel more of what's happening around you but you will always feel it from a space of compassion. The more you relax your body and breathe fully, the more deeply you enter compassion. One of my favorite um, yoga teachers, Matt Sanford, has, um, teaches a lot about mind-body solutions. And he speaks about, especially for practitioners, that you can't breathe your body fully, relax your body, and not enter greater compassion. And that that is the number one most required ingredient if you're here to assist others, if you want to be in communion and connection with others. Um, so it's not about like changing the energy within you. It's not about making a change. It's about allowing fluidity. The, the change happens on its own. As you relax your body, as you breathe more fully, energy will flow more fully. It's just so much we've been up to the job of trying to make that happen. <laughs> Um, so I have a question about allowing our lungs to inhale and exhale versus trying to breathe more fully. This is a great question. Um, what, what I've learned to share the most to assist other people with this is like, okay, if you relax your shoulders, and I'll show you my little Buddha belly because I'm having a baby. <laughs> if you relax your shoulders, your breathing will naturally move into the belly. It will naturally move into that relaxed breathing. So like if you just start with that, and then you can put a hand on your belly and a hand on your chest and try to get where you can see, and then just let your belly expand out with the inhale, sink in with the exhale. And I've been meaning to do another video on this to get on the floor and I'll lay on my back and show you because it makes it a little easier. But if you just let the belly expand and just do it right now, like wherever you are, whatever you're doing, driving your car, sitting at work and let your belly just, or just feel that natural expansion with the inhale and feel your belly, let it sink in with the exhale. 
But if you just start by relaxing your shoulders and you're just gonna move your neck around a little, okay, I'm gonna be present, I'm gonna show up. You might be in the middle of an argument with your spouse, you might be giving a presentation at work. While I'm sharing with you and, and speaking, I always have a huge sh mind share of presence right here. What's happening here? This is my guidance system. This is where the wisdom comes through. Not like from your body, but through your body. And if I'm not present to my body as I'm making love to my husband, holding and feeding my child, um, putting my body to sleep at night or, or whatever, con conversing, having a communication with other people, if I'm not present, I can't allow that wisdom or the essence of me to come through. So you'd be having a conversation with my mind and I could be really smart and tell you a bunch of cool things and here I am, I'm this this person, I'm this super star doctor and I've done this thing and here's what I know and here's what you need to know. And we could have this very mental communication, but it wouldn't be anything like what life really has in store for both of us when we communicate more from the heart. So if I relax my body, so many awesome things come through and I'm like, wow, that was great. <laughs> but it's not from me, it's through me. So witnessing is the huge key to that, to allow something deeper to come through. I allow whatever. And there, for me, it was always like, oh my God, what a mess. I'm such a mess. I'm so this, I'm so that. There was a lot of judgment on it because, you know, there was this idea, I should be happy. Why wouldn't I be happy? I should be ha so happy. I have everything I could want. I shouldn't feel this thing. Why am I feeling this thing? There's a wrongness to feeling this despair or fear or powerlessness, but it's so natural. I mean, it's in the energy field all around us. We're getting bombarded with images of fear or societal messages of you're not enough. You need to do it this way or ways we've been raised that disconnect us from knowing who am I really, what really lights me up? What do I want to be in my life? And then these ideas about here's what you need to do. You need to do this, this, and this, and then you'll have success. So we disconnect from that experience. We disconnect from our body. And of course, yeah, then we just, the, the sensitive beings that we are who are here to awake, awaken right now at this time, um, it's excruciating because it's a much lower frequency than where we're meant to reside, which is, which is harmony and fluidity. Doesn't mean la la la, I am so happy. It means I'm willing to be present to whatever energies I find myself in right now. So those are the three things I wanted to share today in this Facebook Live about how to stop taking on others' energies is to release the resistance um, to whatever's coming up in you. Allow yourself to feel what's coming up in you um, willingly. Willing because you know that it um, indicates an expansion into greater freedom and greater love for you. The second is to release the empath victim and move into... Compassion. I'm willing to have compassion for what I'm experiencing because the pain I'm feeling as my own is the pain of the world, is the pain of this other. And that other may be like viciously attacking you, um, but when you can embrace them in compassion, it allows a very different dynamic. Of course, one where you step away from an abuse or an unsafe situation, but certainly one that invites um, a very different experience for you instead of the resistance that recreates that experience over and over. And then the third part is choosing this, willingly choosing to feel all of the energies that are ready to be released by you. Doesn't mean it's choosing to release it. I'm doing this, why isn't it releasing? I'm willing to feel and allow whatever is moving through me so that I live in greater fluidity. And yeah, I know someone is mentioning, I wish I could turn off all the negativity on Facebook and see only happy posts. But this is part of the invitation is what arises in me as I see someone expressing anger or, hey, this is unfair and we should advocate for this. Or as I see someone expressing fear of, oh, I can't believe this thing happened and there's a hurricane or what happens within me that I haven't been willing to embrace fully. So for this person asking the question, it's, it's beautiful. Yes, you can stop following those Facebook posts, certainly. But it's also, it's, it's really both because we can try to avoid and avoid and avoid the quote unquote negativity. But I've found that when I've allowed it and gone into neutrality with it, embracing it with love and compassion, embracing all things with love and compassion, embracing the energies that arise in me through that experience, that 
that has a much more powerful effect. Now those things don't show up in my field because what you resist persists. And I don't have to like purposely try to get rid of this and get rid of that and shut this thing down and not go there. It will happen very naturally. It will happen much more fluidly. And usually it will happen without any effort on your part or just things that are really easy for you to choose. I'm so excited to be sharing this with you. We will be sharing this also in a podcast and on YouTube on Mind Body TV. I am Dr. Kim Doramo. I can be found at drkimd.com. And if you'd like more um, sharing of this kind, you can certainly subscribe. We share a newsletter regularly, and I love to share on Facebook in my Mind Body community. So you're welcome to participate in all these um, different areas. I do also offer live group programs. Right now, we do still have um, openings for the Embracing Health program. That will be about another couple weeks, and then we'll have our, our second call. The first one was very, very, very powerful, and I'm so excited about the work this group is doing. It will contribute to you, even if you're not directly in the program so if this work speaks to you you're welcome to engage in it in whatever way fits for you but just know that it's a contribution to all of us that the you know the work we're doing in these different groups I also do see people privately occasionally over Skype and things like that um, so I look forward to hearing from you and to assisting you through this uh, integration as we all move into greater expansion into into love and freedom and that is really what true health is so much love. Yes, I am pregnant. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm, it is quite a miracle and um, just going, uh, going into that expansion every day. So I'll keep sharing with you what that experience is like. So much love to you all and I'll see you soon. Bye.